Today, I'm gonna to walk you through the newly released Adobe Premiere Rush mobile video editing app. And on the surface, this app looks amazing. So we're gonna dig into it and I'm gonna show you some of the features that come with it. And some of these features are incredible. And then a little later in the video, I'm gonna tell you what I personally think about the app and what I think about the app when compared to other mobile video editing apps like LumaFusion or Kinemaster. It's also the first app that I'm aware of that's specifically targeting mobile content creators, web creators, and YouTubers. So that alone is a big deal because it is an all-in-one app and you can do everything right inside of Adobe Premiere Rush. There are some other noteworthy features as well. For example, if you're already working with Premiere Pro, you can send files back and forth between Adobe Premiere Rush and Premiere Pro. You can also send your files up to the Adobe Cloud and pull them down on the desktop if you started the project on your phone. And that is super convenient for mobile editors on the go. And if you heard the words Adobe Project Rush being tossed around, that is this app when it was in beta. After the official release, they changed the name to Adobe Premiere Rush, and that's the app that we're working with today. Now let's open up Adobe Premiere Rush and look at some of the top features. Now when you first open up Rush, it's gonna prompt you to go through a tutorial. Go ahead and do that, it's gonna show you where everything is, but since I've already done that, it's just asking me to create a new project. However, the first thing I wanna show you is if you go down to the plus icon on the very bottom and tap on that, you're gonna see an option to add media or take video or photo. Yes, this app has a camera inside of it and it's actually pretty good. So if you tap that, you're gonna see the video option and the photo option and then a toggle down at the bottom that you can shoot between auto and pro. If you put it on pro, you can go through the bottom down here and you can go through the different icons. You can see you can change the ISO, shutter speed, exposure meter. Moving on over, you can change the exposure bias. You can change the temperature, the tint, the white balance, or you can put it on auto white balance. Moving right over, you can change the auto focus or the focus points. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, or you can tap over here and you can change the resolution and the frame rate. For example, if you wanna shoot in 1080p, you can go all the way up to 240 frames per second. And if you wanna shoot in 4K, you can shoot in 60 frames per second. Up here at the top, you can click on the top right and that's the selfie cam. You have the torch, you have the flash that's automatic, you can turn it on and off, or you can tap on the grid that will help you line up your photos or your videos, or you can just close it out by tapping on the X. Now for this tutorial, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add media. So I'm gonna tap on the media that I wanna use. I'm gonna go back and choose a couple of videos that I shot earlier today. I just ran out to the mall and just shot something really quick before I came in here. You choose the clips that you want, you can add a title, and if you wanna sync this to the cloud, you will check this down here just like this. If you don't wanna do that, you can turn that off. I don't wanna do that right now. So I have my clips selected and I'm gonna tap on create. It's gonna prepare the media and then it's gonna load them up in the timeline. Now if you look at the top, this is the video that I shot and if you look at the area highlighted in orange, that's the actual clip. I'm pressing my thumb down and I'm simply scrolling to the left and it is moving it just like this, just along the timeline. So if I take my thumb and I touch anywhere on the screen, either on the clip or down below it, and I move to the left, it scrubs along. If I use two fingers and I tap, I can actually spread the clip out like this. Now if I scrub back and forth, this is what it looks like. And if I hit the play button, you're gonna see an audio meter on the right hand side. Now that these clips are loaded in, I wanna go down to the bottom and look at the options down there. The little blue plus along the bottom, this is where you can capture more content, add a title, add more media, or do a voiceover. We're not gonna do that right now, so we're gonna close that out. And the little icon next to that, the little file icon, if you tap on that, those are movies or projects that you're working on. So we're gonna close out of that. And we're gonna move over one more to the right, which is the little layer icon, which is really cool. If you tap on that, this is where you can lock your layer, you can turn the audio on and off, or you can mute it. This is really cool once you start building up multiple layers, including audio and multiple video layers and titles and so on. So closing that out, we're gonna move on to the next one, and this allows you to set either landscape, portrait, or square. So if you're building something for Instagram, you're gonna make a square. If it's portrait, you can put this on Facebook, or you can put this on IGTV, or an Instagram story. For this video, we're gonna keep it on landscape. So moving to the right of that, if you tap on the titles icon, this is gonna open up a lot of title options for you and text options, lower thirds, and so on. You can tap on that and you can scroll around. Some of them are motion graphics, some of them are not. We're gonna scroll over to the right and we're gonna tap on some of the motion graphics to see how they look. And when you tap on them, they're gonna load up on top of the video and you can grab them, push your thumb down on them and move them wherever you want. And then simply use your thumb to scrub through or hit the play button to see what they look like once they're live. And if you wanna delete it, highlight it, 
come over here to the trash icon, tap on that and it disappears. Once you find a title that you wanna keep, just tap on the text and you can add whatever you want. Moving on to the right of titles is transitions. There's only a couple of transitions in here, but for most people working in YouTube that dips and the cross dissolves and the hard cuts, these are probably enough to get you up and running. All you need to do is tap on the one you want, then go into edit and choose the duration of the actual transition itself. Once it's in there, just scroll back with your thumb, press play and watch the transition. This is all pretty basic, they are limited here, but like I said, I think this is enough for most people to get going. If you want more advanced transitions, hopefully this is something that they're gonna come up with in the future, or maybe you can build your own, but there hasn't been any word of that as of yet. So moving along to the right of transitions is color, and they have some really good color presets. So what you wanna do is go to the timeline and tap on the clip that you wanna change the color on and do a color treatment. Then come down to color, and it has built-in presets. So just scroll through them, tap on them, and find the ones that are gonna look right for your project. And if you wanna to toggle back and forth to see what it looked like before and after, you can come here to this little blue toggle switch in the middle and simply turn it on and off so you can see what it looked like before and after. You can also go down to the bottom and you can change the intensity of the filter that you're putting on it, and you can create your own preset. Moving to the right of color is audio. And this one is really cool. And it's something that's lacking in the other video editing apps currently available. If you tap on audio, it's gonna open up a lot of features for you. And you can see here, you have your clip volume. You can mute something. You can toggle on and off. You can see what it sounds like with or without the change. And you can come down to advanced. And this is where it gets cool. You see where it says other? Well, if you tap on change type, if somebody was actually speaking here or if it was music, you could tap on those and it's gonna change the audio setting to make this sound better. So if it were voice, you could tap on voice and it's gonna give you even more options. And this is where this really shines. You can auto volume, you can balance the sound, you can reduce background noise, which look, this alone is amazing. I know a lot of people creating on phones are looking for ways to reduce their background noise. This will help with that. You can reduce your echo, you can enhance your speech, which basically means it's gonna give you a little bit of an EQ, and you can choose between a male or a female. Look, this feature is really powerful, and in my opinion, it's one of the most exciting features of this app. Moving along to the right of audio is transform. If you tap on transform, this is where you can change everything in regards to rotation or zooming in or zooming out. So you can see as I scroll down here, that there are a lot of options to crop the image, to feather the edges, to zoom in, change the opacity, rotate it. For example, if I come in here and I change rotation, it's gonna spin the image like this. I can double tap on it and it's gonna go back to zero. I can come down to the bottom for crop and if I wanna crop in the top, I can crop in the top just like that. I can crop in the bottom just like that too. So if you wanna do some sort of a cinematic look, you can easily do that inside of Premiere Rush. And if I want them to go back to where they were, I simply tap on them and it goes right back. Now, if you're working with vertical video or square, you can come back, you can change this to portrait and then come back over to transform. And once you get your video clip zoomed in where you want, you can simply tap on it and you can use your finger to move it around and center it. You can also use two fingers to pinch and zoom and twist the video to fill it up however you want or spin it or enlarge or decrease the size so that it fits inside your working space. Now after I put the video back in landscape, I'm gonna move over to the right once again and I'm gonna show you how to do some basic cuts and how to duplicate the clip. So if we're back on the timeline, down on the bottom you're gonna see a pair of scissors. You simply tap on the scissors and it's going to cut your clip. You can go back and you can add a transition in here or you can grab one side of the clip or both clips and size it down to reduce the length of the clip. If you wanna duplicate your clip, you move to the right of the scissors and you tap on the duplicate icon and that's gonna create another clip or another image directly behind the one that you wanted to duplicate. And when you've put your clip together and you're ready to export, you simply go up to the top and you tap on the export button here in the middle on the right hand side. And if you come down to the bottom, you're gonna see the quality settings. Make sure you toggle that and you're gonna see your presets. If you tap on that, you're gonna see 720, 1080. You can see the different frame rates. If you're shooting 4K, that's gonna show up here as well. So we're gonna go down to the bottom, we're gonna tap on export, and it's gonna render out your video, but be aware of the note there that says, do not close rush or lock your device. 
Now, once your video has been encoded, you can go down to the bottom and you can share it out directly to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or Behance. Now, I've walked you through some of the app and you've seen a lot of the features and it looks amazing, right? So let's talk about how much it costs. If you have the Creative Cloud All Apps subscription, Adobe Premiere Rush will be included in that so you don't have to pay anything extra. Just download it and enjoy it. Now, if you're paying for a single app plan for Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Rush will be included as that. So again, you don't have to pay for it. And if you wanna use it for free, you can do that too. You get all of the features. There are no limitations in terms of editing. However, you are limited to only three exports per month. So you can use it for free. There's no watermark, but you can only export three videos per month. So what Adobe's really saying here is download the app, use it as much as you want, but you can only export three times per month. But if you wanna do more than that, you're gonna to have to pay for the upgrade. And that's what we're gonna talk about next, which kind of puts me in the, yeah, maybe it's too expensive territory. So if you want Adobe Premiere Rush as a standalone app, be it on your phone or on your desktop, it's gonna cost you $9.99 per month. And yeah, right, that's kind of expensive. No, that's not kind of expensive. That is expensive considering, and I talked about I'm gonna compare this against LumaFusion and KineMaster. LumaFusion is currently around $20 for lifetime. So you buy it one time, it's yours, you own it. There's no monthly subscription. KineMaster has a monthly subscription of around four to five dollars, but it gets cheaper if you pay for the yearly sum up front. So both of these apps are a lot cheaper than Adobe Premiere Rush. I, I think Adobe Premiere Rush is kind of priced too much, but if you're serious about mobile editing and you like how this app works, then maybe that's gonna work for you. But for me personally, unless Adobe wants to contact me and give me the app for free, I'm not gonna pay for it because I'm perfectly happy with both KineMaster and LumaFusion. Which brings me on to the next thing, which is how does Adobe Premiere Rush compare against LumaFusion and KineMaster? So for LumaFusion, I think that's the most robust app out there. That is a powerhouse of an app. It's very affordable, but it's really difficult to get your head around. But when you do it, it is super powerful. So if you don't mind putting in the work to learn it, it will pay off. That's a great app to get. But if you're just starting out and maybe a difficult app intimidates you, I think KineMaster is the way to go. That's personally my daily go-to app when I wanna do something on my phone. KineMaster is affordable, it works, it never crashes, it's very intuitive and easy to use. I think it comes at a better price point than Adobe Premiere Rush and it does a lot of the same things and I know they're doing massive upgrades right now so be on the lookout for that. I still think KineMaster is the best bang for your buck here unless you wanna dive in, put in the work and learn LumaFusion. And as you can see, I currently do not have a LumaFusion video and that's because I'm still trying to get my head around it. And even though it's an amazing app, I've watched other people use it, so I know how powerful it is. I'm still a little bit slow trying to figure it out. So if you're wondering what I think about Adobe Premiere Rush, look, I think it's an amazing app. I think it's very intuitive. It's easy to use. The audio features, I mean, who else has great audio features like this? Look, this is the first one that they've put out and this is a great number one. This is a great start and they can only go up from here. The only thing that turns me off about this is the price. Functionality wise, I think it's fantastic. I love it, it's smooth. I haven't had any problems with it yet, except for I don't like the fact that when I use the camera inside of the app and I shoot in landscape, I actually have to rotate it it once I load it into the app to work on it. But if I use the native camera inside my iPhone, it loads it up perfectly in landscape mode. So that's a little thing that I'm sure they're gonna fix in the future. But everything else, I think it's a solid app. It's just a little too much for me personally. Now, while this is available on both mobile and desktop, it's currently only available for iOS. Android users can get this app in 2019. So I'm gonna put a link down in the description below if you are an Android user, so you can be notified of when this app is available for you. If you wanna learn more about your mobile phone, be a mobile content creator or be a mobile YouTuber, be sure to hit that subscribe button followed by the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.